This is James Holden for IFL TV. I'm backstage at York Hall today on the Miranda Carter Show with FGF Promotions. Just bumped into Chris Oko. What's happening, Chris? How are you keeping? I'm good, James. Long time no see. Too good long. to see you as Too well. Long <laughs> Matt Last McCarthy in action today, used to train him as an amateur, I know you saw you in this corner today, how would you assess his performance? You know what, it's really good James, because literally, um, I was like I say, I was when I was head coach at Chapel St Mary, uh, Matt was down there as one of, one of the boxers, and um, since, that's about, he's about two, three years ago now, and since then, honestly, he's come on leaps and bounds, you know, uh, I mean literally, how it transpired that I was in the corner today, is like, Matt just asked me, Chris, can, I, can you help me just do the cuts in that, and I was like, Oh, you know, okay. You know, and it really, it was a pleasure and a joy to see, you know, a young lad that I used to coach uh, as an amateur, he's really come on. You know, he's learned how to use a jab and he's, it was a really professional, mature performance that he put on today. So I was really impressed with him. One part I'd like to talk to you a little bit about is Gillian <coughs> White. Um, it's been well documented that his band is coming, coming almost served, so he'll be able to fight again, I believe, from October. Could you talk to me a little bit about how Dillian is and, and what, his, what his mental state is at the moment? Dillian is really good. Um, you're right, James. I mean, literally, we've got under six months now. I mean, literally, the ban is up officially on the 13th of October. So, you know, we can both see light at the end of the tunnel. Jim, uh, um, Dillian really hasn't ever been out of the gym, really. You know, uh, initially, after the, obviously the initial disappointment and what we had, a bad, went for a, a bad patch. He's through that now and he's really, mentally, he's in a really good position. You know, he's rearing and he's hungry to go. Uh, and when he comes back, you know, you know, we're just going to get a few fights, uh, a few bouts under his belt, and then really get into the swing of things, get the momentum going. And then ultimately, the main thing is Mr. Joshua. You know, everyone's saying how he's the next uh, best uh, heavyweight to come out of this country. That isn't so. Dillian White is the only uh, boxer, English boxer, that's beaten him in the amateurs and he'll do the same again in the pros and we're going to burst Joshua's bubble when the time is right. I've sensed a little bit of hostility between Dillian White and Anthony Joshua. Would that be fair to say that? I think the, the, the way, the way Dill, Dillian looks at things is that, you know, uh, all the limelight has been on, on Joshua and to some degree you can understand why he's an Olympic gold medalist uh, and that's, that's a great achievement. However, the bottom line is, is that uh, Dillian and myself know that of the two, Dillian White is the superior boxer. Uh, and that will, that will come to pass uh, when, when eventually they meet as professionals. How much has this hindered Dillian's progress? Because he was on the cusp of, of doing some big things. That's and right. So many people talking and ranting about his performances. Yeah. How much do you think this has hindered him so far in his journey? I think, um, I mean, like you say, James, I mean, when, when it all happened, uh, we were literally preparing for um, the John McDermott fight with, for the English title. Uh, that was a, a big fight for, for Dillian then. Uh, and obviously what's happened now, he's, he's lost two years of his career. You know, we can't get that back. Uh, but what, ha what Dillian has in his favour is literally time. Um, you know, he's still a very, very young man. He's just turned, he's, li he's literally just turned 26 uh, um, last week. He's an April boy like myself. Um, you know, so really, We've got, obviously, we've just got to put what's happened behind us and really look forward. And that's what we're both, both myself and Dillian are doing. Um, you know, we can see light at the end of the tunnel. It's like I say, it's less than six months to go now. Uh, and we're just slowly just building up and preparing ourselves for October, really. October, like you spoke about his last fight out uh, before, before what happened. Yeah. John McDermott, the fight didn't take place. Yeah. Do you see him coming back and fighting at that same level straight away, or will it be? Will it be a kind of a learning curve and re regaining his confidence in the ring? Yeah, I mean, really, obviously, two years is a long time for a young fighter to have out, to have out, really, you know. So what I envisage is literally, you know, Dillian having a few three, four um, uh, warm-up bouts, you know, six-rounders uh, against, you know, decent opposition, mm -hmm. you know, just to build his confidence back up. And then really, I mean, Dillian... At the time when it all happened, the ban happened, you know, he was moving into title and championship status. So really, what I envisage is literally after four or five bouts, he gets back to championship status. I mean, it'd be nice if we could get uh, the bout with McDermott. But, you know, if that doesn't happen, you know, there's other bouts out there, you know, southern area, English, English area, English title, and then take it from there, really. Dillian's a very exciting fighter, so I, for one, am looking forward to seeing him back in October, you know? Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, ins and outs. If the ins and outs, it's not my place to comment on what's going on. It is what it is. But we're looking forward to getting him back in action. Anyway. That's right. I mean, you know, the the worst is behind us now, and all we've got to do is literally just look forward to to what's happening, really. And and to, again, when when he comes back, to look forward to what's you know when he when he comes back, you know. And I mean. What we want is to, for Didion to be boxing, reg or he will be boxing regular. When I say regular, once every every four or five weeks, really, you know, to make up that time that's, that he's lost. If the opportunity to help Anthony Joshua did arise, how, how quick would Dillian say yes? What would his response be? Dillian really would, would, would take the bout at a drop of a hat. If they said, you know, box next week, you know, Dillian would take it, you know, and, and I would take it as well because that's how confident I am that Dillian can beat Joshua. The reality is, um, you know, the bout won't happen for certainly for the next 12, 18 months. You know, Joshua is a young fighter, a young, talented fighter, you know, building his career. Um, Eddie Hearn is, is got him, you know, wrapping him up in cotton wool to, to, to some degree. Uh, and I think really when we come back, we're going to be showing Joshua and really the fight fans what a real British heavyweight can do. All right, Chris. Well, I thank you for giving me a bit of time today, sir. Hopefully, we get a chance to catch up again real soon. Not Great. So, not so long in between interviews. This yeah, time. yeah. And uh, thanks for giving me a bit of time, mate. Brilliant. Cheers, James. Thanks, thanks for interviewing thank me. Thank you, Chris. Cheers.